Who can provide you with free health care, school, expanded social security, and a mandated $15 minimum wage without spending a single dime? Don't be daft, you know who. The Bernie Man Cat! So I received this flyer at the Grand Rapids Feminist Film Festival, and ironically, people who hate social justice warriors were mad at me for not supporting Bernie Sanders. Off the bat, disregard the fact that his tacky campaign slogan was stolen from a late 80s Jane Fonda workout tape. Feel the burn, you b Many of you think that I'm wrong on the financial issues, and that's fair. Even Bernie Sanders himself has said that the attacks on him are unwarranted, despite the fact that he's never really rebutted them. So I'm gonna promise them free health care and free college. But but Bernie, how do you how do you plan to pay for that? It's never come up! So anecdotally, this is the promo material that was sent to me. And these were all the free things proposed without any real plan to pay for them other than these two things. Plus a third thing that we'll get into. Up on the housetop! Clack, clack, clack! Down through the chimney! With more free sh now, is this even close to financially viable? Uh, granted, all mathematical equations available to human beings right now say no. But you don't have to take my word for it. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, please allow me a moment to plug our capitalist sponsors in audible.com. This week, there's a promotion going on at audible.com slash Crowder, where you can get a free audio book to try. Uh, again, that's audible.com slash Crowder. It's free. Support the show. I recommend Ben Carson's book, read by Mr. High Energy himself. Benny, we're going to be just fine because she believed it. And if you don't download it, you're probably racist. Audible.com slash Crowder again. It is a great service because like the podcast that many of you listen to on iTunes or SoundCloud of Audible, you can listen to a book. If you don't have time to read it and it can be going on in the background while you're reading, researching, studying, uh, I use it all the time. Audible.com slash Crowder. I really do recommend it and don't be racist to get Ben Carson's book. Back to Sanders. Financial experts have done the math and they have figured out that Bernie Sanders' plan would add an additional $18 trillion to our national debt over the next 10 years. I know you'll say it's Wall Street Journal. It's been debunked. I'll get to that as well. Really quickly here on YouTube, I see some self-professed financial gurus use national deficit and debt interchangeably, but they're different and it's important. Why is that? So the deficit in 2014, meaning the annual spending beyond our revenue was 500 billion. Our national debt is around 18 trillion. So the deficit is the yearly overspending and the national debt is the cumulative, the sum total. So if we round the numbers for simplicity at 500 billion in annual deficit in two years, that'll put us at 19 trillion, okay? Okay, so in addition to the current spending deficit of hundreds of billions, the Bernie Sanders proposal would add an additional, on top of that spending, $18 trillion in debt over the next 10 years at minimum. So on what does Bernie Sanders plan to spend this money? Well, free college, free health care, expanded social programs. Here are some free phones! Treat yourself! Hey, Gray sucks! Is that a six plus? You want a six plus? Give him your six plus! No. Give him your six plus! Hey, hey! Give him hey, your hey, six Bernie. plus! Well, like I said, some of this math came from the Wall Street Journal and Bernie Claus's supporters were quick to condemn it as dishonest and so were the Occupy Democrats page of the 99%. Yet his supporters and Bernie Sanders himself have yet to offer an official rebuttal or even explanation for the new spending. Instead say that we could potentially save money in the theoretical. But, but Bernie, someone is bound to ask you how to pay for this. Trust me, it's never going to enter in to the equation. So the pro Sanders arguments come back to three main components, stopping the endless military spending, taxing the rich more, and finally they claim that a nationalized healthcare plan would actually save us money. Now, some of you think that the spending versus revenue math may be more complex than people lead on to be, maybe so. But allow me to start off with an absolute, an extreme to make a point. If you cut the United States military entirely and taxed all earnings over $1 million at 100%, you still couldn't come anywhere close to paying for this plan. Perhaps I've not made myself clear. The chances of the media or my voting constituency asking how I'll pay for this plan is lower than Ted Cruz having a sex dungeon. 
Okay, so let's start with the military. The military industrial complex. Why is that phrase thrown around so much? Because just like ignorant bumper stickers, it assumes that the United States' biggest expenditure is its military. It's not. Total military spending in this country accounts for 18% of our budget. About the same as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and certainly a lot less than all of our safety programs and welfare initiatives when combined. Not even close. People love to throw out the number that the United States spends more on its military than anybody. But when you account for percentage of GDP, we're just so successful in America, we actually spend less than Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Food for thought, in the last seven years, year over year, increased spending on the military has far outpaced the United States in many countries like Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, etc. Granted, I know many of you think that's a good thing and that the United States military might should be seen as an evil instead of a virtue. So let's just move on right now to the numbers. 2014 total military spending was around $610 billion. So let's cut all of that, 100%. Gone. Over 10 years, we gain about six trillion dollars. Congratulations, you've made the United States and the world a much less safe place, but you're not even close to paying for all of Bernie Sanders' free stuff. Just tell all those kids that will take that shit from other people's piles of shit so we can give them more free shit! Which brings us to point dose multiculturalism. Okay, so let's tax the wealthy. They can afford it. After all, the top one, maybe five, ten percent didn't earn that through responsible saving, investing, and tireless work, so it's the moral thing to do to steal their shit. Let's assume so. Still, would it solve the spending problem? Firstly, when we throw around terms like top 1% or 10%, it's important that we define them. What constitutes the top 1% in America? It's actually any household with annual income exceeding $500,000. A great living to be sure, but hardly the vilified billionaires we've come to believe. But let's start with a number even higher. The top percentage of the top 1%. Would it even cover our costs? Let's say you tax all earnings, every dollar, 100% over a million dollars in this country. What would you get? About another $616 billion annually. Add that with the six trillion from entirely cutting the military and you've got another six trillion, so you're at $12 trillion. Damn it, still six trillion dollars short. Missed it by that much! Moving along down the trail, disregarding the fact that nobody would work for free, the negative ramifications would be insane, particularly the punishment of small business owners and the fact that essentially a 100% tax is absurd, how else can we generate revenue? Well, you'd probably have to increase that number from the top percent of the top 1% to, let's say, the top 5%. Those bastards can still afford it. So what defines the top 5%? Any households earning $190,000 annually or more. Damn, I thought they'd have more. Well, what if we just take almost everything, or 90% like Bernie Sanders seems okay with, with everyone in the top 10%. Top 10% in the United States is any household earning 150,000 or more. Not exactly the fat cats you thought, huh? Still, for the greater good, they can afford to have more, if not nearly all of their stuff taken, right? Not exactly. Even those evil 150,000 heirs are still overburdened, paying over 73% of the taxes already, despite only making up 43% of all revenue. Even if that sounds fair to you, Mr. Pantsless YouTuber with a bag of Cheetos, it still doesn't make skyrocketing their taxes any more financially viable. That's It's why Greece, with their 46% income taxes, well, Greece. It's why their own government has a really tough time collecting taxes. It's why the Laffer Curve exists. It's why nearly every single empirical economic study ever conducted and published in peer-reviewed academic journals shows a negative impact between higher taxes and economic growth. Son of a bitch! I know where you're going with this! Stop! So again, using the most extreme examples of entirely cutting the military and entirely taxing the wealthy, you still don't come close to covering what we need. So when the verifiable, tangible numbers must be thrown out to make your case, that's when leftists direct you to point three. The theoretical proposal that instituting a nationalized healthcare plan could potentially save us money. Now, even the leftists at Salon and Huffington Post are not arguing that the Bernie Sanders national health care plan is a net gain, but that it could figuratively save us $5 trillion when compared with the $18 trillion in expanded spending, namely by reducing administrative costs, medical inflation, etc. So we've reached the point where you now just have to take their word for it. The idea is predicated on the notion that we will spend $5 trillion nationally anyway, so it's in our best interest to give the consumer buying power choice and freedom over to the federal government because it could save us money in the long run and potentially 
increase the quality of healthcare. A few problems here, not the least of which is a gross infringement on the freedoms of the American public who still want to be able to choose their own healthcare. Like I said, it's important to note that we're in the realm of projected costs now. As a general rule, the United States government never comes in anywhere near their projected costs when taking over massive social programs like this. From small programs like student loan forgiveness to larger programs like Medicaid and yes, Social Security itself. What leftists tout as a victory with Obamacare in costs versus initial projections is really hardly a victory here because projected costs actually rose until, surprise, the government kept expanding the deadline and every non-Obamacare enrollee saw their premiums skyrocket. Even leftists aren't thrilled with the results and have acknowledged that a mandated subsidization of other people's health care is not really comparable to the projected costs of a nationalized single-payer health care plan. So you have to point to countries like Canada, where I was raised, and you can see a video here on Canadian health care as a moral victory. When Canadian liberals themselves have acknowledged the need for reform uh, and fixing the $500 pay gap when it comes to their nationalized health care plan. I said 500, I meant 500 billion. And I don't want to spend that much time on this point because the fact is everybody is guessing. It's like arguing over whether Superman could beat Batman in a fight or Ronda Rousey versus Floyd Mayweather. It's silly, it's unrealistic, and a whole lot like Bernie Sanders. How can you be so selfish? Bernie, Bernie no! He only has a no. 5S! No! You son of a bitch! So in closing, and I'm getting very near the end of this now, to believe in Bernie Sanders' proposal and tax plan, you have to do the following. Disregard that cutting our military entirely wouldn't make a dent. Disregard that taxing the wealthy and even households with 150000 a year or more, those bastards at an astronomical rate wouldn't cover it, and disregard the fact that said job creators and wealth generators uh, would take their wealth and jobs somewhere else. You must believe that the wealthy will effectively work for free because they want to pay for your stuff just that much. Once you ignore all these concrete and tangible examples, simply shout that a nationalized health care plan would save us money and make up for the trillions and trillions of dollars in costs completely unaccounted for. Get it over! It's for the greater good! The scariest part? There are still millions of people who actually believe in it, and nothing you or I say can convince them otherwise. Because how can you compete with make-believe? Stop being so selfish! <laughs>